All the fun of a dentist chair without having to get your teeth or your skull drilled. Whee! <laughs> Get down! Well, this is fun. Let's go help him out. <laughs> it's hard to stay still and film when you're this excited. We're looking at the Quick Jack by Ranger Products. It's a subsidiary of the Ben Pack Company, which means good quality stuff. I am so excited. Let me get these bikes out of here and let's put this together. This is the way it shows up. Let's see what's inside. I'm pretty excited. So right out the bat we've got instructions. It says, important, please read first, never raise jack frames to fully extended height with no vehicle load. Instructions. I should probably just go inside and read these now before I do anything else. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I was only aware of the 3,500 and 5,000 pound one. Didn't realize that there were more of them. Uh, but here's what you got. It's actually pretty good quality photos. They're not color, but they're glossy. <laughs> I can't just not pull this out. I want it out of the box. I really suck when it comes to getting the instructions first. I want to look at everything. Do you have any idea how freaking cool this is and how freaking portable this is? I want to like push all the buttons. I want to grab it. But it's just like... Whoa! Super fun. Notice that the box looks awesome. I mean, this was shipped FedEx. I've had all kinds of things just really get mangled in shipping, but this looks great. Slide that off, open it up. Holy glossy, glossy finish. So what's the difference between these instructions and the other ones? Fun! All right. I feel like a little kid on a teeter totter I'm all excited. These cardboard boxes are freaking tough. Look how thick this is. I mean, there's there's double layered cardboard. I've seen I've never seen triple layered cardboard. Like these showed up looking like a gym. So let me take you on the tour. So you got the two different supports or jacks. You got the hydraulic unit. You've got the double hoses, and then you got a couple of short hoses. You've got two manuals. Both of them say installation and operation manual. So just in case you miss one. It's in this box, you'll find one that comes in this box, box number three. You'll find a bunch of quick disconnects and fittings and all of that good stuff here. And then in this box, you'll find this little guy here, just a couple little Schrader fittings. Tension! Act on, baby! Position jack frames under parked vehicle. Never, ever drive over on top of the jack frames. Gosh dang it, you'll screw it up. Your tire could bust this off and just all kinds of bad stuff could happen. So yeah, consider that. They're trying to get this as low as possible so you can get it under a low car, uh, you know, like a Cadillac CTSV or something and still be able to lift it good. By the way, those CTSVs are hard lift and I can see this being a huge boon working on that. My hydraulic assembly is already good to go. I do know that you gotta put Teflon tape, wrap three wraps around it, don't get any over the edge or you're in trouble. Uh, go here and then I've got four of these and the way that these work are the male and female are together. Let's twist this around, there we go. Just want to line that up. So you pull this off. These are much shorter and easier to work with than the ones that I saw um, in other videos and in past renditions. So I know that there's been some changes. Uh, one of the other changes that's unique uh, to this unit is that the safety catches are automated type. Uh, they've got a little foot on them. You can't see them in this copy, uh, but in the sporty car copy of the instructions, you can see it. You see, you look there, you've got the safety catches like this. I've got the 5,000 pound unit here. And like I say, this being assembled saves me all kinds of hassle and stuff. So I've pulled the plugs out, I've put O-ring side down, and there's already a bunch of uh, fluid or whatever on these. So they were lubricated when I put them O-ring side down. Uh, when I say o-ring side, see how there's an o-ring on that one? So you've got two short hoses. On one end, where you have a nut that spins freely, that's going to go onto here. 
You're going to snug that down. This goes into the actual unit. And you install them at 10 o'clock. So you got 12 o'clock, uh, 3, 6, 9. So you want it slightly up so that it kind of doesn't arc with the hose. So we'll do those here in a minute. Uh, at which time you don't do Teflon on this one as far as I can tell because it's got just a compression type fitting uh, that does the sealing for you. Just like a bleeder on a caliper you don't have Teflon on that either. These will receive Teflon because they're on either end of your coupler. Um, whatever this goes to has Teflon, whatever this goes to has Teflon. So you've got this big round hose and then you've got these short lengths of hose. So these all receive a female and there's Teflon that goes on these first. Wrap it three times. Don't have it hang over the edge. You can see on this how the edge is clean and clear. If the edge has some Teflon over it, it can contaminate and get in the hydraulics and mess you up. Don't do that. Make sure that it's below so you have a little metal sticking off and then Teflon down below that. So we're going to Teflon all of these and these two. See how they all look the same? And then the adapters, of course, on the non-rubber side. The O-ring side goes to the pump. Capiche? Let me show you one just as an example. Now, of course, this is a female and this is a male for those of you who are wondering. You don't have to pull this back. You just push them together. They just click like that and then just pull the collar back and they separate and automatically seal. Pretty nice stuff. And like I say, these are lower profile ones. They're just nice like that. So it's easiest if you do the bottom one first, if you do B first and then A. As far as A and B go, they're gonna go at the same time either way. So don't worry about that. When I was going through and getting the wrenches, it says to have a three quarter inch wrench, which is equivalent 19 millimeter. You can see I have here with me a three quarter inch wrench and it doesn't fit on there. No way, no how, it's 0.76 inches. So it's big enough to get on there and still be the right size. So this is the right size, this isn't. It's like 20 millimeter, which is a really weird, odd size. So what I'd recommend doing is just get a crescent wrench and get them snugged up the way that they're supposed to be. Watch your power cord, don't pinch that. I'm telling me, I know you would know that. You guys are good. So just remember your pointy bits are your pump and your jacks, and then the female parts go on the hose. we go about six inches. If I were to spin it this way, it'd be over the top of it and stick out to the left. That's another way you can remember it. Remember to leave a little metal stick out so that you don't contaminate. You don't want a little piece of Teflon getting stuck in your O-rings or seals or pistons of this thing in the pump. Creating leaks. Nobody has time for that. Okay, so these are all going to be female on this side. It should look like that with the collar on it. Just remember the collar goes to the double twin hose side. Let's get your crescent wrench. Crinker on there. Boy, well that yields and snugs down. It really snugs down. Another six incher. Woo! About yay. I think we're about ready to turn the radio back on. Alexa, play. Alexa, stop. Alexa, how many pound feet in one newton meter? One newton meter equals 1.36 pound foots. Pound foots, huh? Alexa, What's 1.5 times 38? 1.5 multiplied by 38 is 57.0. Alexa, thank you. You're welcome. Alexa, play. Okay, one thing I like to do with my crescent wrenches is if you're tightening, these are really sharp. They'll tear your thumb up. Alexa, stop. So what I'll do is I'll take a grinder and just grind those off. So now if I go flying off, it's not going to be as inclined to cut my finger. So I've got a 7 16 inch trench and I've got a 3 quarter inch. I've got my two fittings and I've got my two trader valves. I'm ready to do this part. There should be a shipping plug here and here to keep these clean. Uh, mine just had duplicate of the Schrader valves. It's got an extra in case one's leaking, I suppose, and they're using it as a shipping cap. And I'm gonna install the one that I've got Teflon tape on. Again, wrap it around three times. Make sure to leave a little on the end so that you can get them started for one, but also so you don't contaminate the air chamber and create a blockage. Here we go. For this part here, you can use like a five millimeter Allen wrench or just get a pair of pliers. Once you get it a little bit loose, it'll spin out just fine. So this has a bunch of oil and stuff already on it and in it. Take a little bit of that oil and you can apply that to your O-ring. 
Or what I like to do is I'll take just a little silicone spray and that really seems to make O-rings happy whether it's fuel injector O-rings or whatever. Work clean, make sure nothing gets in it. So of course we're all ready to close this this way so we're going to line this up at the 10 o'clock position as I'm looking at it this way. So 9 o'clock puts the thing just right flat and even, that's tempting. But we want it to be slightly up because as this raises it's going to angle the hose a little better for us and that way we're not pointed straight into the floor. Take your 3 quarter or 19 millimeter and just kind of snug that one down too. Once you've got that on, you don't need to do any Teflon on this one, but this is where your hose goes. So I'd screw it on here first and then once you're satisfied with the way that that is, this is just a compression fitting, that's why we didn't do any Teflon on it. So we've got our fittings in place, we've got our hoses set up, our jacks are set up, everything's ready. The next thing we need to do is, well you see we've got two quarts of transmission fluid here, we're right at the two quart line, we're just going to pour it in. Wow, that does not breathe the belch well. So there's this that goes in the top and then there's a plug on top of that. Make sure that you pull out the bottom part when you go to fill it and make sure that you're pouring from a clean container and that you're pouring through a clean funnel. So what happens if you don't do all of that is that if you go to pour it through this teeny tiny little hole, it takes forever because there's so much air pressure backed up in there. So what you can do is get a long straw like this one have it down in there and have it be a bendy straw so that it won't go all the way or just pour it in through here and just let it go bloop 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 but if you tape this to your funnel or do something to make it not fall in you're good I used a teeny little spray straw and now that straw is down in there don't do that so you can see the little straw in there I'm gonna take a little piece of straw that fits down in there and I'm gonna take a piece of wire I'm gonna put the wire bent in half up through here so it sticks out just a little bit and then I'm going to use that to grab onto the straw and pull it out. Plan and execution. Got her. We let it go. So this is basically the tool that you use to grab a rattlesnake with or something that you want to grab it by the head but not get bit. Kind of same concept. And land it right down the bottom. Wow, this is so much better. So when I pull this funnel, you can bet that I'm going to grab that straw first. Alright, so straw comes out first. It's like when you give blood or something, they got to pull things out and put them in and be real good about order operations. As you get her done. Alright, so we're all set to go. So there's some bleeding instructions. Let's talk about how to do that, shall we? So these are the little bleeder screws for the cylinders. Um, you've got air through a lot of the system right now. This is going to make a little bit of a mess, but you loosen these up and then pump the fluid through and it'll basically, all these lines are empty when we put it together. We need to get all of the air out. Loosen this, this is a 5 millimeter hex or Allen. So we just uh, push up. And when we see that squirt and we don't get any more air bubbles, see this one's starting to go up. And you see the fluid pouring out the bottom. So we'll just tighten that screw back up. And basically all we did is we push all the uh, air out of the hoses. And then when we disconnect it in the future, see like with this one, you don't spill anything. I mean it just closes it up lickety split. That's the most appropriate time I've ever used lickety split because it splits it apart. So I haven't done the 50 PSI yet. I was going to bleed it first and then do that for better or worse. Boy that bleeding went easy didn't it? I did not expect it to be this fast, that's cool. All right, so I've got my safety glass. Of course, I always wear gloves. And I'm gonna put 50 PSI in these little guys. So we're at 40 PSI. It says don't do more than 50. When I put that on there, it sucked it. It used it like a vacuum. It like sucked it right down. So I think that helps to, okay, so let's put it on. Just really quick bump. So there's 50 PSI and get off. The instructions say to do this first, then bleed it. It kind of says it funny because it says to do it and then it says to do it again and then it says to do it again after you've bled it. I don't know. Uh, it's not real clear to me. And there's two different instructions included so things are a little crazy that way. So that little bleeder filler thing, I think you're supposed to leave that a little loose. It says breather vent should be tightened for transport 
and shipping always loosen. So if I have a bleeder closed on the plug, if I have the, I need some water. That's why it's going down so slow. Aren't I fancy? That lasts a little bit. It's way faster with the bleeder open. Good to know. So on the lift supports here, just a couple of safety things before you lift a car. You want to make sure that these are parallel. You can't be more than two inches off, so make sure that they're straight. If they're crooked or sticking out, don't lift the car. Make sure it's straight before you come up. Always, when you lift it up, make sure that your safety latches catch. Um, I did some things with this earlier off camera. I made some mistakes basically to where it started coming down funny. Always make sure that both your safety things click and make sure that before you let it down that both of them are lifted in the release position. So here's what it looks like as a minimum when you're coming up. You see this thing's actually pretty quick. I mean it lives up to its namesake. It gets up and moves. So we're lifting this up. We're coming to the first safety catch. So you want to make sure that the other side is also uh, in its safety catch. So we're going to come down and you see how it catches there. Now and only now can you work on the vehicle or do anything with it. Even pulling a wheel off, you have to have at least that. And that's, you know, it's a, it's a small amount off the ground, but it's enough to do the job. So if you're in a hurry or a tire shop or whatever and you just want stuff in and out quick, that's what you do. To come back down again, you press the up button. I heard both of them click. And then the cams ramp up and go over that way. You see that the other side came down also. So the jacks slide a little bit when you let it down. If you go up and down, up and down a bunch of times, eventually you'll find that the vehicle's too far forward and your uh, stuff's not lined up anymore. So let's go up to the second one. You'll notice that my jacking points are a little bit to the back of where they should be. So that's the first place we can stop, and then there's one more place that we can stop. If you want more of them, you'll have to weld them in, but... So that's max height, and then we let it back down and we're secure. You see we got quite a bit of space underneath of the tire now. We've got plenty of room. So I've got my hoses to the back like this and the nice thing about that in my opinion is most everything that you do is in the front so that way you got lots of room with your creeper, your transmission jack, stuff like that. So when I'm doing transmissions I like to do them on the floor because my transmission jack is right down here. It's a floor jack so how do you use that with the other lift? I mean, you can do it, but I like the idea of doing it like this. So once you're on your safety catches, you are free to move about the undercar. Uh, when you're going to put it down, let's go through the go down procedure. You lift it up, and then you go to both sides, and you just set them like that so that the cams are in the get down position. See? So like that. Do the same on this side. Make sure they stay in the track. You don't want them hanging outside of the track. I probably could use tightening these a little bit. These are a little too loose. While these do need to be loose enough to work properly, see that one's not too bad. And that one doesn't come out of the track. But I do need to adjust the other side. Just watch what the cams do as you come down. So we're coming up on the safety catch and bump. If you find that your camera starts getting funny, that means that the catch on the other side is engaged. Stop, push up, and get it up to the next position and find out what happened. So you can see my lifting points between here and here. So you see the gap there. Make sure that you're parallel with the vehicle. Uh oh, somebody's having a bad time. That's about right. Check my block here. I'm in that reveal. Uh, this block I could probably benefit from putting right here. I wasn't real careful the first time. Make sure that it's nice and straight with the car so that I'm parallel within that two inch thing. Let's go up again. 
I don't even have anything to do on this car. I just can't stop putting it up and down. It's just fun. I really love how fast it is. So we'll go all the way down. All right, start the stopwatch. There's our first position. Still coming up. Second position. And hold. That's pretty quick. That's not bad at all. It'd be nice if you could drive over the top of it. But again, like I said, you can't do that. You have to either start with them together in the middle or from the outside. Because if you drive on it, you'll bust this air thing off. You can see how it's welded. I can stick my hands in here, I can work under there, but only when this is in the lock position. So I ran over the handles with these close together and then I pull them out. Now because he's traveling an arc or a radius or whatever, this is the radius, you want to make sure that they're a little bit favorable of it. I've got an opening this big, so that when it goes up it's also going to go this way. So we planned ahead, no biggie, test number one. Boom! That's as high as you need to get the wheels on and off. That's usually what I operate at with the jack and jack stands. That's pretty comfortable. Goes right to the locks. It's quick with some good weight on it. Now I'm not speeding this up or nothing. This is how fast it is. I thought it was slow because everybody time lapsed it. I don't know what they're time lapsing it for because that's plenty fast enough. So if you're the racetrack or if you work on cars in your garage a lot and you don't want the permanence, you want the flexibility of the quick jack, holy crap it's a great option. It's so much slicker and nicer. First time when you're setting it up you're just like, oh, I don't know about this. But after watching it go up that fast and your jack stands are already set, piece of cake. I mean I'm going to be pulling these, you see I've got these studs in winter tires. I don't want to run these in the summer. So for somebody that's running summer winter tires or wants to get the most out of them, it's going to switch them out. This, coupled with something like your electric impact, you know, where you don't have to have an air compressor or whatever, especially if you leave them in the middle and just park over the top of them when they're not in use. But bam, lots of access. How's the height? I'd, I'd like a few more inches, personally, but that's not bad at all. I'm wondering if it's legit or okay to stack the blocks to get the little bit more height, but I'm tall. Hey guys, check out the new lift. <laughs> that's all the space that it needs, that's it. Let me show you, let me explain here. So when I'm done, I just hang it on a chain on this pole here, and it doesn't take up any space at all, and it can't fall over side to side can't fall out and the bottom can't roll out from underneath of it. So the whole thing can hang by this $1.50 in piece of scrap chain that I found. When I go to take it down, it's a piece of cake. All you gotta do is lift this up a little bit. It kinda works as a lock to help secure it in there. You just release the chain and you're free. Same thing when you go to put it back, you just dump your chain through. Put this through above. And you can make it loose. I like to have mine just a little bit tight like this. I'm a control freak, what can I say? And uh, we're good. I don't have to worry about anything getting hurt or scratching anything up and it doesn't take hardly any space at all. $1.50, free. And yet another way still is to just put a hook on either side, 16 inches on center. This is plenty narrow enough to where you can just run a chain underneath the hinges here and be in good shape that way. It's not going anywhere. If it tries to have the bottom slide out, the wheels, it catches it there. If it tries to fall over either way, I mean this thing would ride through an earthquake no problem. And that was easy. While you can't drive on the frames, one thing you can do is put them across sideways. I was thinking of that Cadillac CTSV and how hard it was. To Basically these were really hard to get set up for the CTSV. This would be way easier. Things aren't in a straight line, they're not parallel because you've got stuff 
uh, together here that's a little bit more narrow than the one back here so you couldn't do this because you can't go like that but you can do it this way and with the little wheels on the end that makes it that much easier as you pick the car up expect it to go sideways but outside of that sweet so I've got my blocks here I just throw my double hose here and then the pump just tucks away over there by the power outlet. I mean, this thing takes up about zero footprint in the shop. It's easy to open your doors when you're using it. And you can use it just about anywhere. And the work height is just about perfect. For a tall guy like me, I'd like a little bit more height. But I think that would be a lot to ask given that there's so much awesome all-in-one package here. And that it folds up so small. I mean, this is pretty incredible. One of the constraints in terms of having this be longer is it's got to fit between here and here. If you go any bit longer in height, you're going to wind up having it not fit between the wheel wells, basically. So I think these guys did a fantastic job with this. And again, I really like this new piece here. And then I'm excited to see what they come up with to solve this issue uh, with this being too small this is wide i mean look at that it's so wide that you just can't fit this on there outside of that it's pretty awesome so i'm not going to go a long long video on this okay probably i already did i've got so much footage on this thing though there's so much awesome going on all in one place i'm pretty excited about it but it's valentine's day go get your sweetheart something don't miss a boat you know what happens We've got the quick jack all laid out and ready to go. And my mom stopped by and she's going to give it a try. Ready? Yeah, go right ahead. It's working. Look at that. It's hard not to smile while you're doing that, isn't it? Yeah. Do you feel powerful? That's the safety latches. How far up do I go? Till, till it sounds like it's laboring. Uh, yeah, so then you push down and it'll settle onto the locks and now you can work on it. Cool. So you just grab a creeper behind you here and then <laughs> grab a few ridges over there. And it doesn't take up much room either, does it, in the garage? No. It's kind of cool. Yeah, so it's portable and then the lines here disconnect and it's got wheels on it, you know, like a hand truck and then you can just wheel them where you want and lean them up against the wall. Wow. Not bad, huh?